All right, guys, it's Rick Kutzer here again with Ergen Webb and Ergen Webb TV, and I've got Travis Whitney here from JSAR, Jefferson State Air Rifles. We've already talked to you guys about the basic Raptors, what they are, why they were made. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about the technical side. So I'm gonna let you take it away. We'll be right back. All right, Travis, this is your wheelhouse. You're an engineer. You are an inventor. You built these guns <laughs> basically from scratch. Right, a, a team of us did. Yeah, okay. No, not you alone, right? Not, you, no, okay. we have a great team at JSAR okay. of engineers and machinists. And uh, yeah, we got a great team. Okay, so a couple things that jump out to me uh, before I let you get into the internals that uh, I like. One is you've done some mil-spec stuff, like mm -hmm. the... You, like an AR, you put whatever AR adapter you want, right? Right, as any far butt as stock, yeah. any grip. So it's an a, a standard AR grip. Standard. Right. So if you like your Magpul, whatever, you can drop that right on here and it should right. be fine, right? That's correct. It comes with what you see, but you can doll it up any way you like. Customize away. Yep. All right. It's super light. Super light, yeah. Okay, so these guns, I don't know what the weight is on that, but that's probably five pounds or under? Yeah, about five and a half pounds on the Mini and about six and a half pounds on the, yeah, so on it's, the Raptor. It's very light. Yeah. Okay, so you actually got your own scope too, which we'll talk a little bit about that maybe when we do some shooting here coming up. But these things are just uh, pretty cool. If you're into that sort of tactical look, you've mm -hmm. got that pretty much nailed. Now let's get into the nitty gritty about why these guns actually perform at the levels that you guys needed them to. So start with the mini first, okay? So this is a tiny little guy mm -hmm. and you're sure getting is. 60 plus foot pounds. Is that right? Yeah, over 60 foot pounds. Okay, in 25 cal. In a 25 cal. Yeah, okay. we can push it up to about 70 if we really crank on it, but it's about a 65 foot pound gun um, without leaning on it much, which makes it, uh, you know, pretty field worthy for a lot of different animals and uh, yeah. some fairly distant shooting, you know. Yeah, I mean, we were shooting um, pretty easily at like 100 plus yards with this. So yeah. That's, that's definitely within the scope. Yeah, for Absolutely. sure. For okay. sure. And one of the things we were talking about, too, is really the secret sauce is that valve. Absolutely, our balance and, valve. And most of the time with guns, and I, I know technology is constantly changing, but... When you need more power, oftentimes the solutions just hit it harder. That's correct, and dwell it longer. Yeah, and you know, more air with more energy, and you get more power. And that does work up to a point. <laughs> mm. But if you can increase efficiency, you can actually hit it softer. And you reduce a lot of internal mass movement and all those other things, which right. that really helps your accuracy. That's correct. So that's sort of what you have going on here. Can you explain that to us, to the guys that may be interested in something like this? Sure. Okay, first we have the Raptor Mini here. Um, what stands out of, about the Raptors and how they're able to make a lot more power than most of the air rifles on the market is they have large plenums. So they got a fairly large plenum in both guns. The Raptor, of course, has almost twice the size of the Mini in plenum size. But because they have such large plenums, we don't have to have the pressure cranked really high in the gun to make power. And because we don't have to crank the pressure really high, we don't have to smash into the valve very hard to make the power. Also, we have a balance valve inside of these guns. And a balance valve has a poppet design that shields part of the um, pressure that's required to close the valve and that allows you to hit it softer to open the valve. So we have a large plenum and a balance valve so that allows us to hit the valve very soft which lowers the reciprocating mass when you're shooting the gun and increases the longevity of the parts because you don't have a lot of spring tension on everything. It, um, it makes the triggers really nice because you're not leaning on the sears and everything like that. Yeah, all of those things come together yeah. to create the whole package. And That's correct. You know, when you're talking about that mass transfer, you know, if you've got a one pound thing slamming inside of something, that's going to be, you're going to notice that. Right. If you cut that weight in half, it's less noticeable. And it's not a one pound hammer. By the obviously. Like, yeah, obviously. But you get that idea when you're cutting weights in half, and you can actually see when you're shooting this, 
I don't know if we could actually put this, I'll have to think about this when I get one here for testing, is actually put, put my phone scope through this one and watch how the gun moves when you fire, pull the trigger compared to something, compared to something of similar power. Of similar power. And I Which way you have to turn the power way down though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll get something. I'll find something. Okay. But, you know, it'd be pretty interesting to see how much things move. That's and correct. When you have less movement, you have easier repeatable accuracy. That's correct. And I noticed that really just from, from on the bench and shooting, you know, clay fragments. Especially at, at uh, distance. Yeah. Yeah. Makes a big difference. Yeah, it really does. So the other thing you were telling me about was you guys do something, you guys hand make each barrel. Is that is that how things are going or how we does that We have work? our barrels uh, machined at TJ. They produce our barrels for us. And then they send them to us and then we machine each barrel individually. And we turn it on its center. Um, so everything is turned on center, which means you have to individually chuck each barrel up and machine both ends of it, which is very time consuming but it's the correct way to have things accurate and no clipping. Well, you were telling me that when you set these up, and right now you guys are a little behind because of the, the just the, the, the work yeah. the work involved to get those barrels done. Yes. But you'll have four or five guns, and you just want to just move your scope, and it's very little adjustment because correct. everything is so precisely done That's right. and repeatable that you can almost move one, the scope from one gun to another gun and be pretty much on. Yeah, few clicks. I can move this from the 30 cal right to the 25 cal. Few clicks, and we're in. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's really a testimony to how precise things are being done. Um, let's talk a little bit about price point because okay. in the market there are already a lot of guns, high power, low power, super quiet, tactical, interchangeable, and you can mm -hmm. change the barrels on all of these too. Yeah. So if you get a 30, you can go to a 25 and. You can, I mean, it has all of that built in. It sure does. Um, but when we're talking price point here, what are we looking at? Um, you're looking about a $1,400 gun, either way. Okay. They cost pretty much the same amount for us to build uh, either side, so they're about the, they're about the same price. Okay. Um, which is a lot lower than some of the high-end guns. Sure. But in this case, you're getting a lot more power. And every single gun that goes out the door, I take home and I personally shoot them on paper. Okay. And if the end user gets it and wants to tweak it, how complicated is it for them to get in there and actually make those modifications? Uh, it's pretty simple. There are basically three adjustments, three power adjustments to adjust the power up and down. One is there's a hammer spring back here that you can adjust the tension of the hammer spring, which allows the hammer to hit softer or harder. There's a hammer buffer in here. It's a little bit more detailed and technical to explain, and we'll have to do that in a video later. Okay. But that limits the travel of the valve, how far it opens, actually. So we can adjust the, the height of the valve opening and how long it's open. So it's like a cam on a car. Okay. And then the third is the externally adjustable regulator, which is right here. Uh, it has a wheel right here that we adjust. And on this side at the bottom where we have it right now is the fill gauge. And on the opposite side is the plenum gauge. So when we adjust the regulator right here with the wheel, we can watch the plenum gauge move up and down as you adjust it, and that'll change the pressure inside of the plenum of the gun. And this, of course, has a very large plenum, and that's half the reason why we can uh, get the power levels we can. This 30 right now is setting at 1,800 PSI, and we're making about 85 foot-pounds at 1,800 PSI. That's, like, pretty efficient. Well, we talked about them. We talked about the technical stuff. Now I think we need to set up and just do some shooting. Let's do that. All right. All right, guys, that's going to be it. Stay with us for our fun shooting video coming up next. My name is Rick Utzer here with Airgun Web, Airgun Web TV. Thanks for watching.